Hey guys, today let's just take a little trip back in time to the year 2001, to the era of the PDA. For those of you too young to remember, before we had these, we had these. These kind of served the same purpose as a smartphone or a tablet. You could get your email, you could read magazines, you could read books, you could even watch videos on this little pea green black and white screen. It kind of sucked, but it was also kind of cool. It was new technology at the time. It was completely offline, so you had to do everything you wanted to do on your computer. You would sync it up, take this thing out. I used mine a lot on the train. I had this exact same model, a Sony Clie. This is a PEG S320. This one's brand new in the box. My original one is gone. Found another one, brand new, and thought I would just try to get it working again. I have here my ThinkPad P50, which is running Windows 10. We'll see how it does with that. I don't have a lot of hope, but in back of that, I have my ThinkPad 600X, which is still running Windows 98, and that fits in pretty nicely with the system requirements listed on the box here. So, little disclaimer just to start out, does this serve any purpose whatsoever? No, and it's not supposed to. Every time I do something like this, somebody chimes in in the comments and says something like, I'd rather just do all this stuff on my cell phone. Well, sure, <laughs> that's why I have this. This is just about having a little bit of fun with some old technology and seeing if I can get it working again with some new technology. That's all it is. So without further ado, brand new Sony Clie PEG S320 Palm OS powered PDA. Let's crack this thing open and see what it can do. First, let's just take a quick look at the box to see what this actually comes with. Palm OS software version 4.0. Obviously, this is not one of the original Palm OS devices. Came out a little bit later. Sony, um, Sony saw an opportunity to kind of try to integrate some multimedia features into these. They didn't do it that much with their early models, but the models that came after this were actually quite advanced and did a lot more stuff. So they kind of ran with the line and helped push it along. But uh, this is just kind of a basic PDA here, Palm OS version 4.0. Takes memory stick media, which as you probably know is kind of a dead format. Um, the PSP used it. It was kind of a Sony proprietary thing. Uh, I don't have a memory stick to put in this, so hopefully I won't need one. I don't think I will. Usually you would have used that just for storing, you know, extra data like books and magazines that you might download, videos, that kind of thing. Has the jog dial navigator, which was kind of a game changer. Um, scrolling on these was a real pain before the jog dial, and the jog dial just made it extremely easy. Comes with a hot sync cable, does not come with a dock as far as I remember, and there's nothing listed about a dock on the box, which was kind of a disappointment at the time, but does have the cable. Picture gear, pocket software for viewing your pictures in lovely pea green and somewhat darker and lighter pea green. G Movie video player, again, Sony focusing on that uh, multimedia. And trial versions of exciting handheld applications from leading software vendors that are unspecified, but you get menu assistant, restaurant notes, and tip calculator in Amy Riley's Pocket Gourmet, so that's something. Memory Stick Gate, which is basically a file manager. Before this, most Palm PDAs did not have any kind of a file manager, so this was kind of a new thing at the time. System Requirements. Windows 98. Windows Me or Windows 2000, Pentium 133, 32 megs of RAM minimum, display resolution of 800 by 600, 128 meg available on your hard drive, a USB port and a CD-ROM drive, and the specifications on the device itself, if you can see these. We've got, uh, again, Palm OS 4.0, 8 megs of RAM, 4 megs of flash RAM, which I'm probably going to need. That's how you uh, download stuff. USB, infrared, and there were actually applications that would allow you to use these as a remote control. Backlit monochrome, one, 160 by 160. Yes, it's quite low res. But 
Look at this battery life, 15 days with normal use. That was awesome and still is today. So let's get it open. Installation CD and manuals. One of the interesting things to me was always these graffiti uh, cheat sheets that you could actually stick to the back of your device. That's what these are actually stickers. And uh, I may have actually done that for a little while. I'm not sure, but uh, it did help because you know most of the letters are kind of self-explanatory, but a few are a little strange, and especially punctuation marks. Uh, they, you do kind of need to memorize them. It's not difficult, and it comes pretty naturally after just a short time. But uh, <laughs> just the fact that you needed, they actually gave you something to just stick on your device. It's kind of funny. Please read the instruction manual. I assume this is the CLIA itself. Yes. And they did come with this nice sort of leather cover. This one obviously has been in storage for 17 years and it's kind of deteriorated a little. Mine on my original CLIA had completely just detached. It had just split apart. So that does happen to these and you can see the logo has kind of imprinted itself on there already. Charging cable, which I will need to use before showing you any of this. And the hot sink cable. And this is where the magic happens. So hopefully I can get this to work on one of my machines. While it's charging, I just took the cover off and I just want to show you kind of what happens to these. You see here, it's just, this one is already splitting right out of the box. These just kind of deteriorate over time. I'm not sure what material this actually is. It's not leather. It's not, I mean, it's not vinyl, because I would think that would last. But it's kind of a shame, because that was one of Sony's big selling points, is that they came with this cover right out of the box. You didn't really need to buy a separate case. And it kept the device kind of sleek and, uh, you know, didn't, didn't make it a lot bigger like some cases did. But these days, I mean, even a brand new one, if you find one, it's going to, it's probably going to be split like this. So, oh well. Now also while I'm charging, I figure I may as well try to install the software. So, trying it first on my Windows 10. ThinkPad P50. Again, I don't have a lot of hope, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, that's what I was afraid of. Uh, it's probably 16-bit applications. Um, I've talked about that before in my $20 laptop video. It's just not going to run on 64-bit Windows. Okay, now I've been charging it for a while, and it may not actually be holding a charge at this point. It is a 17-year-old battery, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the setup with the charging cable connected, and uh, I'll see if I can get it to charge after that. But uh, here we are in the setup. We're uh, going to set up the stylus here. This is how you calibrate one of these things. Tap in the corners and in the center. We'll set up our time zones. And January 2nd, 2001. Go all the way up to 2018 here. 
And right now it is February 1st. And I'm not going to be too worried about this. I'll just, it's close enough. And we are done with setup. And this is the main interface. This is how you get anything done on the CLIA. And uh, <laughs> let's see what CLIA demo is. As you can see, graphics don't look too bad on this little screen. This is probably what they would have had running in a store. The hardware buttons down here are for a uh, calendar, uh, address book, to-do list, and memo. And uh, as far as I remember, those can be reassigned. Well, anyway, there's not that much more that's all that interesting that's on here by default. So I'll see what I can get on here on my computer and uh, try and hot sync this thing. Okay, so pretty much worst case scenario here. The battery on this thing is apparently completely dead, which is not unusual or completely unexpected for a device that's been sitting in a box for 17 years. Rechargeable batteries do go bad and uh, lose their ability to charge completely if you let them completely discharge. I have had success in the past waking batteries up in uh, things like this, but this one seems to just be asleep permanently and probably not anything I can do about it. Uh, I've tried charging it for hours and hours over the last couple of days, but if I pull this out, it's just going to switch back off and there will be no way for me to switch it on again. Okay, I'm back and it's a little while later now and I've got my CLIA here and I've actually bought a new battery for it. Uh, hopefully, this is a new battery. I've never opened one of these, so I'm gonna give it a go. Um, I don't know how hard it's gonna be. I see a screw here. I see a couple screws on the bottom. I see a screw here and one on the top. I'm hoping that's all it is to get into this, but it is Sony and you never know. So let me just take a crack at it and uh, I will be right back. And there it is, opened up. Um, see if we can access the battery now. So there is the offending battery right there. That's what I've got to get about replacing. So I'm just going to get it out and uh, get the new one in there. And hopefully, hopefully that one works. Okay, old battery is out. New battery is here. New battery is actually quite a bit thinner. Uh, same specs, same model number, so hopefully it's just better battery technology. But anyway, let's plop this thing in, see if we can finally get it to work. Okay, well, next step is to just charge it up for a while and then see if it works. So I'll be doing that and uh, I'll be back with you. Okay, so let's check it out here. And as you can see, the new battery is working great. So very happy with this. I now have a fully working CLIA again. And I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna try to hot sync it like I did before. Hopefully this time, it's going to work. I'm even going to try it on my new ThinkPad, well, newish ThinkPad. Uh, I think I may have found a way to do it. And uh, if that doesn't work, I'll go back to the old one. But let's try it on the ThinkPad P50 first. So success. I've gotten it to work on Windows 10, at least to a certain extent. And I'll talk about that in a minute. 
but I have gotten it to hot sync. This is Palm Desktop 6.2 here. This is not what would have come with the Clie to begin with, but this is the latest version of the Palm Desktop by Access, who holds the current rights to the Palm OS. And I've also had to install a 64-bit driver that I found somewhere from a company called Akika. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but works just fine with my Clie. And let's watch and hear how a hot sync works. Love those uh, circa 2000 sound effects. And it's going to go through and it's just going to synchronize everything. This is back in the day when, uh, you know, people thought of the PC as the hub to your entire digital life. So you would go out, you would write stuff on your PDA, you would do emails, you would write memos, whatever. You'd come back and you'd sync everything to your PC, so you'd have it all in one place. I didn't actually use Palm Desktop much myself. I used Outlook. You could sync to either one. But um, if you wanted to install something, there's a little install icon right here. Um, if you wanted to install new software, that's how you would do it. You would just drag stuff over into a folder and install it, and it would sync up to your handheld, and it'd be there. But you can see it worked. It's synced up. Whatever data I did have on here, which is not much, is now on the PC. Um, in fact, I may not have anything. But there's a lot of stuff that still doesn't work at all on, uh, on Windows 10. And for that reason, I'm going to go through all this again on Windows 98, and I'm going to just install everything off the CD as it originally would have been. There's a few entertainment apps that Sony included. You know, I'll try and get some games installed on this too. I don't think I played any games on this back then. I had like a Neo Geo Pocket Color that I played games with, and just I actually did productivity stuff on my PDA. But anyway, Sort of successful here. This would be fine for most people if you just wanted something to save some uh, some quick memos and write some emails to sync offline. You know, that's what most people use these for. So it does work for that. But I'm going to try and get the full experience on my Windows 98 laptop now, just as it would have been back in the day. Okay, so at this point, I have the full experience on my Windows 98 ThinkPad, which is a ThinkPad 600X, from about the year 2000. And this would have been exactly the kind of system that you would have used with this Sony Clie. And I've got everything installed that I want to have installed. Um, I'm just going to show you guys uh, a couple of games. Um, the handwriting recognition, which is something that, this, that the... Uh, palm-based palm tops were well known for. And um, I also want to show some video on this thing, which is um, a little crazy. Um, <laughs> I'll show you how that works in a minute. As, as you can see, it's, it's not... Well, let's get it out of the light. It's, it's not really the ideal device for... Uh, for video, it kind of has that, you know, pea green, very slow, uh, almost Game Boy-like screen. Um, but it does support it, and I will show that to you. So let's just hot sync it now. I'm going to get everything installed that I want to have installed. I've got everything on the computer right now, but let's get everything. I'll make sure that everything's on here. And if if everything is done already, well, no, it looks like it is installing some games. So. I'll try those out before I show them to you, but uh, it's going, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, first I'm going to show one of the games that I just installed, and this one's actually pretty impressive. Um, it's a 3D game and runs really smoothly. Now the screen, the screen does actually look just as bad in real life as as it does probably in the video. I'm guessing. Um, but, you know, the CPU is keeping up really well, and, uh, control is, you know, about what you'd expect for a touchscreen game playing with a stylus, but, uh, I'm kind of amazed at how well this runs, and I don't remember this from when I owned this before. I probably never installed this when I had this, 
like I said, I had an actual game machine of some kind at that time that I played on the go. Um, I used this really for what it was intended to be used for. Um, I used Avant Go mostly, which I can't show you because it's just gone. Um, but I guess this thing could actually play some pretty impressive games. Now, one of the things that Palm devices were uh, quite well known for was their handwriting recognition. They were not the first, but they were at the time the best and probably still the best because there's not a lot of handwriting recognition in either, you know, Android or iOS because you're not using a stylus. You're writing with your finger or whatever. Um, but I used the, hand, the uh, handwriting recognition, which was called Graffiti, on this quite a bit. And, uh, well, you really had to if you wanted to get anything done. Um, let me just see if I can write anything here. So, there it is. This is how you would write a memo. <laughs> it actually worked pretty well, surprisingly enough. Most of the graffiti characters are pretty close to how you would naturally write them. Uh, an A looks like at least part of an A. A B looks like a B. And you kind of just have to trust, to a certain extent, the, uh, capital, the auto capitalization. But it works pretty well. And, uh, you know, obviously there are ways to shift case. But, yeah, that's it. I, th I still think the handwriting recognition on these things was one of their big strengths. And lastly, I'll just uh, I'll sync up one or two of these uh, sample videos that came with it. These are the sample videos that came with the CLIA. They're all of these two apparently twin Japanese girls. So uh, <laughs> we'll sync one or two of these up and just see how it looks on the CLIA. You see how it looks here, nice and smooth, if a little low res by modern standards, but remember, this was 2000, uh, or thereabouts, and this was digital video back then. So really not bad for that time. So let's work on these. You have to actually do a little mini conversion to get these over to the CLIA. So, uh, So once this is done, I'll sync it up and then get back to you. Okay, and I've synced up the movies now, so let's just take a look and see how we did. And you might remember how they looked before. <laughs> there you go. That's video on the Sony Clie. Just take a look at the second one. <laughs> yep, that's about it. That's the quality of video we used to have on our handhelds. Anyway, some of you might be wondering, uh, you know, after seeing how awful this looks, whether or not there was any backlighting for this, and the answer is yes. Um, Actually, this was one of the first models. It might have been one of the reasons why I got this back in the day. I don't think the actual palm models had backlighting yet, but there is some very rudimentary backlighting. In fact, let me uh, just turn off the lights here and hopefully you'll get a better idea of this. That's not all the lights off, but I think you can see the backlighting here. Um, get the stylus out again. It was actually, it was quite readable in most situations, so really no complaints about it. That's backlighting on. This is backlighting off. So definitely made a big difference in dark areas and didn't hurt the battery too much. So it was a really useful feature, as was the jog dial on the Sony Clies, which was another innovation that they were known for. Now, Sony did produce a lot more advanced models than this over the years. I'm just showing you this one because this was what I had, and it's a lot more retro than a lot of the more advanced models that they produced later. 
They did have some models later that were almost like modern day Android or, you know, iOS phones and could do a lot more. They were very entertainment oriented. They did a lot of video. They did music. They were really geared towards, they're almost kind of like an, uh, like an iPod touch or something like that. Um, but anyway, just wanted to show you this one, give you a little retro feel of how we used to do handheld computing in the olden days of around 2000. Um, back when my ThinkPad X here would have been the current, uh, a current ThinkPad model. And the early days of palm top handheld computing. But, you know, I was one of the early adopters then. And to see where we've come now, it's, it's both amazing, but you can also kind of see where the roots are. And there are certain things about this device that I still love. I, I love the stylus. And I love the handwriting recognition. By the way, I did use a Samsung Galaxy Note uh, phone for a while. So uh, I had a Galaxy Note 2 and a Galaxy Note 4. So I do like the stylus. And, you know, maybe someday I'll have another one of those again. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This look at uh, the Sony Clie Peg S320. And I'm personally really happy that I got it to work again, that I got that battery replaced and have what is basically like a new Clie here. Is it useful for anything, really? Probably not. Uh, I don't think I will ever use it for anything other than, you know, showing off to you guys and maybe keeping it on display somewhere. Everything it can do, you can do better on a phone these days, but it's just kind of cool to look and see where we were originally and how far we've come. Anyway, that's it for now. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.